Hi, what's up? This is officially the last part now, right? I spoke, I was speaking about how Christ was a Jew and how he come, he will come to fulfill the law, right? Alrighty, now, um, if at all, my ancestors, sorry, these rituals of yours where you have to drink blood just to utwasa or to get your riches and your wealth and you think that you can go to church afterwards. You think that you can be next to Christ and you also say that the Lord is called the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings and so therefore he's Lord over your ancestors but he is content like a king having a whole bunch of uh, sub ministers underneath him but he's cool with every last one. No, he's not. Christ is Lord over Satan. It's written in God's word that, that one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Every, not just some, every entity, every Nephilim spirit, every human being that's ever been born, every angel, every, every created being is going to bow down and confess that Christ is Lord. But how many people go into the flames of hell? A whole bunch, including many, a third of heaven's legions that fell with the devil. But they will nonetheless call him Lord, will they not? It is possible to have a prime minister that is despised by the president of a country and satan is despised so too are his uh, fallen angels so too are those who do not worship the lord and find themselves in the eternal lake of fire and god so despises those who rebel all right that in the book of isaiah towards the end of it i believe it's in isaiah it is written that once all the judgments have been um, unfolded and we are now living in the new heaven and the new earth we as christians are going to have as a tourist destination the saved are going to have as a tourist destination hell we are going to go and look upon the dead bodies where the worm dieth not and the fire does not quench. That's how much God despises sin. He is going to allow your eternal torment to be a tourist destination for the redeemed. That he's going to gaze upon you. That's why I keep on saying that the tribulation is more like the Hunger Games where the elite, the capital, is watching people literally strive unto death here on earth. There is rejoicing in heaven at some point after God pours out, I believe it's the trumpet judgments. Following that, there is a celebration in heaven have you seen in the hunger games how they celebrate when somebody dies or when somebody conquers a feat or something people are actually dying but there is a celebration that's gonna happen y'all need to understand the holiness of god is that extreme such that there is a celebration when the wicked fall when they have been super stubborn yes the lord does not delight in the death of him who dieth but he does grant mercy and grace and once his wrath has reached an end a brim a cup then it is a celebration on the day when that menacing thing is moved out of the way do you want to be among the people that are gazed upon when you are busy weeping and gnashing your teeth for eternity while well, Garabo just looked at you looks at you like you're some sight hey eh? some like grand canyon something worthy of visiting in order to go and like you know pleasure your eyes with nature's glory do you want to be that no so that is how holy God is that is how much God also throws some of his ministers his principalities those that are Lord's small L underneath him into hellfire you therefore cannot conclude that all ancestors way and your demons basically are because the Lord is the lord of lords that he is happy with what they are if at all it goes contrary to who jesus is then you need to understand that it is despised by him and so if at all you slaughter cows and sheep and whatnot and sacrifice them to gods christ was the ultimate sacrifice no longer do we need the, the blood of rams and bulls and secondly if at all you drink that blood you are an abomination to him you are eating or drinking an unclean thing and so you cannot then partake in the blessings of heaven when you are engaged in the deeds of darkness. Kelly Kumalo is in Khale. Just some silly little video where she gained a silly, where she was telling of a satanic prophecy that she got in the name of Jesus, where she was saying that God is upset with false teachers, but no, not just false teachers, but also false Sangomas. I'm sorry, Sangomas, period, Kelly, period. But you see, is that kind of duplicitousness? Like, what does it take for a person to, 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 to go to Some of them, they have to go to drink blood. And also, some people that aren't necessarily Amasangoma, but Batwele, they have signed their soul to the devil in order to get success. They have to drink blood. And they don't even know whose blood it is. The Lord despises those who put their children through the fire. Many people in the occult sacrifice babies. They're like the Moabite, sacrificing children to their god, Kamosh. You cannot, for the life of you, imagine that those dark practices Christ approves of. He doesn't. He doesn't. Food is to be kosher. If at all, you're going to be truly holy. If you were born like Jesus without spot or blemish in your body, you would eat kosher food. And so if your food has any blood in it, you are sinning. More so if you intentionally drain blood, leave the meat to the side and drink the blood. You are a vampire on that day. You belong to the kingdom of darkness. There's no way you're going to heaven. You are an unclean thing. So the confessions of these ladies 
and men talking about the darkness that they dabbled with once upon a time speaks volumes about where you belong. Not only do they drink blood, which Christ never would do, but they also burn the incense. There was rituals and sacrifices in the presence of God's Ark of the Covenant that, ought, that was supposed to be done in a particular way uh, back in those days. Do you understand? And if at all you you did anything wrong, it's one hair out of place. You could die. Levitical priests had to go into the Holy of Holies with a bell, like a rope tied around their their ankles, and it had a bell on it, lest the Lord should strike them dead for doing something wrong in those uh, yearly rituals. So they could like pull them out. If at all, they just like dropped dead to the ground because they couldn't just walk in there. There are people who have touched the Ark of the Covenant and died. When it was in the presence of the Philistines, they got loathsome sores on them until they restored it to the people of God. That is how God feels about his temple, about his holiness. He has rules. And if you break them, you don't get to just like continue to stand. And you guys are busy burning the incense. You are burning the all of these funny things. You are granting, chanting. When did Christ ever grunt and chant and faint and spit on people's faces for crying out loud? When with like uh, that that scripture where the Lord's like uh, hooked up like some sand and then spat and then mixed up and put some salt there. He is God. He gets to do these things. But then when you go and you mix all that stuff with darkness and you grunt and you chant, guys, demons are unruly. Think about the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel. How is it? They were the ones that were grunting, chanting, hookah, chaka, hookah, chaka to try and burn their sacrifice but what did Elijah do he just prayed and the Lord burnt his sacrifice so if you're grunting and you're chanting and you're in some room of smoke and you are up and down and you are a prophet of Baal your acts are so explicit and so clear according to the scriptures and the prophets of Baal were killed after their random seance so if you are in a hot sangoma and in church on Sunday you are an abomination to Emmanuel it is no wonder he is going to spit you out of his mouth you are doing things that are not of God so do not mock the Lord he is not to be deceived. There is no fellowship with light and darkness. If you are partaking in these fruitless works of darkness, burning incense that is not like that which the Lord has set apart to be burnt in the presence of his ark of the covenant. If you are making like Eli's two dirty sons and having sex in the presence of the Holy of Holies, then you are going to just like Eli's sons be struck dead. Understand that that's exactly what is going to happen. Do not mock God. Do not mock the king of the universe because you're going to find yourself blatantly disregarded. On top of that, you are not Levitical priests. So you don't get to burn incense in the presence of the Holy of Holies, which today is your temple that is the Holy Spirit because now your temples are indwelt by God himself. Therefore, if you do not treat your body like the Holy of Holies that is indwelt by the Holy Spirit and you burn the into around it, you are like ones who are practicing an unruly ritual in the presence of God. You will be struck down. Repent. Huditila in the premises of Disangoma. The things they use, the tails of horses, animal worship, like all different kinds of sacrifices using dead things. Stop. Because that stuff is not holy. And if you want to carry on with it, understand you have chosen a kingdom. It's called the kingdom of darkness. You do not belong to Christ. Just deliberate on these things, think. Okay? I keep on getting them based by nightmares because people often won't give us what you trust. I belong to Jesus. I don't do that. And I will never do that. So anyone trying to get me to do it, understand that you are under judgment for attempting to stumble a daughter of God. If anyone causes these little ones of mine to sin, it will be better if a millstone was tied around their neck and for them to be thrown into the water, into the ocean, than for them to face God on the judgment. Repent. I'm sending out in Christ's name, Crank K. Bye.